Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. This is the Shikama Psychic Ghost Hunting Live Show from Las Vegas. And if you want to see a Psychic Ghost Hunting Live Show from Las Vegas, I would like for you to thumbs up the video so Anubis and I can... You, you okay? Anubis and I can go hunting ghosts in Las Vegas. Now, what does a Psychic Ghost Hunting entail? It entails... Uh, a that the person have some sort of ability, some sort of gift to go along with it. So I'm gonna, today, this is my uh, origin story. So uh, here's what I want. If you are more than likely, you believe in ghosts, you believe that the dead pass on and that uh, sometimes they sort of linger, that you will, uh, you will thumbs up the video and that you want to see the uh, show. Now, if you're one of those religious people who uh, are afraid for my eternal spirit, that you will thumbs down the video so we can have a clear picture of who is who. And I'm, and I'm being, being deathly serious. Uh, if you are of the mindset that the people pass on and sometimes they don't, go into that good night and they don't and they linger on and they have some unfinished business that they want to take care of and somebody like me has to come along and sort of deal with that uh, then you would thumbs up but if you have the religious religious mind that uh, that's uh, you're afraid for my eternal spirit you would thumbs down okay so let me get into who I am and uh, what what I've been avoiding for all of this time. Uh, because I grew up among black people who are normally super religious and who only think that celestial entities have spirits. That means that angels on the other side have spirits, which is strange since they believe in our own eternal spirit that any spirit talking to you must be evil. They even look sideways at someone that says that God spoke to them. That, that's me. I've never, I've never said that. Being raised in that, all my visions, visitations from the dead, speaking with angels, was always told to push that down because it was of he who must not be named, right? I can't say this on YouTube because they'll give it a community strike and be demonetized the video. So if you catch this video demonetized, you know why. Well, I think it's time to come out of this ignorance. I am psychic. I am an empath. I am a medium. I don't just hear dead people. I see them plain as day. Since I refused to talk to them, they didn't talk to me much. Uh, which is, which is more powerful? Somebody who hears the dead or somebody who actually sees the dead? Which, which one can you, would you think is more powerful? Leave a comment below. But wait, there's more. I not only do all that, but I also can astrally project. If you know what that is, leave a comment below. I used to do this all the time because I was a latchkey child. Do you know what a latchkey child is? Leave that in the comment below and would go to bed fairly early, yet be alone in the house. I would come out of my body, fly around the property, and then stand over my body to watch over myself. Uh, one day I was at my aunt's house and she was keeping me for the day or for the week or something like that. I told my aunt that I saw her coming up to the house. She didn't understand. I told her that I had come out of my body, flew around the house, and stood watch over my body, and when I saw her coming up, I went back into my body. I told her everything that she was wearing and what she was muttering on the way up the house. I was impressed with myself. I thought this was something spectacular. 
she forbid me to never do that ever again. And she made me swear and promise to do that. But get this, it wasn't that she didn't believe me. I clearly told her exactly what she was muttering a hundred yards away from the house. She said that when I get out of my body, an unmentionable can come into my body and keep my spirit out of my body. Once again, everything is down based, right? Uh, why am I doing this now? I was sent a message of some sort. Something did something. Something happened uh, just today. No, the other day. I I got a strange. I had a strange dream. Strange dream because it didn't apply to me. This is why it was strange. It was so foreign and so vivid. And something happened in the dream where a normal human doesn't, isn't able to do this. What happened in the dream? So during dreaming, the average human cannot see reflections. They cannot read papers. In the dream, a portion of the dream, I called 911 emergency. And I read to them the make and model of a truck. I don't have a truck. And then the truck changed and shifted and, and it kept shifting and changing. The reason I was calling emergency was because at first all the wheels had been stolen off of the truck, right? Why do I know this? Because in the dream I was standing about a hundred yards away from the truck. Don't ask me how is this possible. And they said, what make and model is the truck? And I read to them the make and the make was as big as day, as bright as daylight. And I read it off to them. I even went over the letter, letters and half, half the lever, letters were gray and half the letters were black. I mean, I, I, I can't remember the, the name, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't like Toyota or something like that. It was something really unique and different. And what I should have written that down because maybe that was part of some message that I needed to get to somebody. Uh, and then, so keep in mind, I read the name of the make and model off of the rear gate of the truck, right? But when I went back to the truck, it was instead not the tires that were stolen, but the actual bed of the truck that was completely removed. Which I, which in my mind was another confusing thing. I said, that is something, so what is going on here? And then I went and got into like a rally car. I don't have any cars at all, none. I got went and got into a rally car all painted up. Uh, and I'm still, it was, everything was vivid. It was orange and yellow and, and all sorts of decals all over it. And I got into the car and I drove home to a house house, right? To a, a house I'd never been to, a house I'd never seen before, but of course I saw everything in detail. It was a, a big fancy house, right? And it was my house. Everything in the story is mine. This is why everything is so weird. So I, what I did then was get back into the rally. No, at, at the home was my other car, which was a compact car, which I guess was my everyday car. And it was gray. Uh, I don't own any of these things. This is why this dream is so confusing because in the dream, I kept getting the, the, the notion that all of this was mine. This was all mine, all mine, right? Why do I have three cars? I'm not a three car person. And I lived alone again, still in, in the thing. Uh, I had been the location of the actual truck was at a school and I had gone to the school to swim in the swimming pool. The school here doesn't have a swimming pool. So it's not here. It's not during this time. Whatever this is, it's not during this time. And the truck was actually encl enclosed into the gate of the school. So somebody would have to have come into the gate. But then when I got back to the truck again in the gray compact car, the truck was now missing the tires and the bed. And I said, I, kn I knew the make and model. So this, whatever is happening is, is keeps happening. Something is, 
is changing. And now, these everything in it was specific and nothing of it was familiar. But it keeps saying, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. And in the dream, I was confused too because I knew that in real life, I didn't have any of this stuff. It was vivid, vivid as day. Now, I had a, a other couple of other visions. I don't know who that... I don't know who that uh, story was for. And I don't know if it means that somebody's going to steal something from me or that I'm afraid something's going to be stolen or if it's for somebody else completely different. Now, uh, that was the message and then some other dreams came up. Uh, I had a, a, a dream. I don't know if I told you this, but I was, I was in not heaven. It wasn't heaven. It was somewhere else. It was kind of like purgatory and I was speaking with my grandmother now my grandmother when she died when she was uh, 90 years old right my grandmother is very formal very proper very you must address me as grandmother blah 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 right and you have to address everybody in her president in her presence with their title right I got to this place where my grandmother was uh, and I got the sense that she was living in this condo per se and she invited me to stay with her. I was only there temporarily and I remember feeling very thankful to her. I kept thanking her. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, she was getting ready the entire scenario was that she was getting ready to go out well <laughs> it's, that by itself is a little bit uh to me crazy she was putting on let me let me let me first say this very formal woman was talking to me as if we were equal and i got the sense that she had threw away all of the stuff that was uh, near and dear to her in life and that in death, everything was super informal, super, uh, we were on equal footing now. And it was, it just, that right there blew me away. Th that alone blew me away. And it felt so real as if I had actually gone to that place. And I kept saying, she's getting ready, she's getting ready. Well, the thing is... She was putting on a red sequined dress, form-fitting red sequined dress. That we're talking, this is completely out of character, completely. And so, so she wasn't just getting ready to go somewhere. She was getting ready to go out for the evening and party. My grandmother? My grandmother. Have you seen the, uh, what would you do in a, it's the uh, classy, People who say you you can't marry our or you can't date our daughter you have a lower class. My grandmother is the mother in that scenario. Go look that video up. What would you do? Would you date some your, your daughter meets introduces lower class guy? Oh my God, that's my grandmother going out to on the evening on the town. Now her husband has been has been uh, passed for uh, I, I almost all of my life so. 30 some uh, probably 30 some odd years right so it's been quite some time they were 20 years apart anyway so uh, so she's about due for that anyway be that as it may that that whole scenario where I and I kept getting the feeling that I was there uh, and then I sort of half woke up and said am I am I dead and I kept saying no I'm not dead and I kept thinking I, I kept being transported back and whatever it was I wasn't ready to go wherever this place was but I would go and speak with my grandmother who was like, oh, hi, how you doing? My my grandmother would never talk like that. She would talk like, um, grandson, what are you doing today? You know, like that, very formal. So I was sent this, these various messages, 
And then all of a sudden, today, my YouTube was flooded with psychic medium videos. I didn't type in anything about psychics, nor mediums, nor is it on the on the uh, trending channel, uh, trending page, I don't think. Uh, anyway, I didn't click on anything about it. And then, uh, just nothing but uh, everything. Boom, 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 psychic medium. One of the messages was talking about the movie Sixth Sense and how the medium, as a child, was afraid of the dead visiting him and how he could see them. He said that after he called his mother, she would calm him down and explain it ran in the family. Now, upon hearing that, that's me. At my age, but right now, seeing the dead scares me. But that's because everyone around me said it's the unmentionable beings and I shouldn't talk to them. It's taken me this long to come to grips with the fact that mundane people have no idea about the intersection of the physical and the spiritual world. And it's literally paper, paper thin and everyone And not all of them are all scary beings, right? Also, after being haunted by my former best friend's grandfather for over three years and having him, the grandfather, trying to communicate with him, my best friend, through me and my former friend refusing to acknowledge and the spirit going full polter poltergeist on me, that there was no way no more way for me to ignore my own abilities. I thought for a time that I had lost my gift since I hadn't seen anything, but after 10 years of being badgered by the, the dead, it's clear that not only was there not just one spirit trying its darndest to communicate with me, but spirits are everywhere. I kept thinking places were haunted, and finally I now realized it's not the places, but that I can see and hear these spirits. Because I have spiritual ears and I guess spiritual eyes, right? Imagine my shock when I asked the landlord, had someone died in an apartment? And they said no. What was funny was, one of the office workers said, I want to come to your apartment and witness this phenomena of the ghost coming into your apartment every day. And I, and, I, and I said, nah, I don't know about that. Basically, the question is, can I do this like a parlor trick? Here's what I think the psychics on the mediums on TVs are doing. Actually, there's no need to think about it because they, a few of them have come right out and said it. Uh, they're a bit braver than I am. First of all, they have all opened themselves up to communication with the dead. That means they talk and listen to the dead. I still have not. For the longest, it was a one-sided conversation because my upbringing, I was told that don't talk to the dead because that makes them bolder and stronger. It's like when you give a dog attention, they'll demand more and more attention, more petting, more food. So I pretended not to hear them. Stupid. Uh, which, when you think about it, is stupid. It's not that the dead aren't real. I just went along with my super religious family and pretended I didn't hear the dead. It's probably the dumbest thing ever. My pastor from 30 years ago pulled me aside one day when I visited the church again. Says he still sees the signs of the cross I showed him in his old church. This guy remembers this after 30 years. And they did not tear down that church. They bought the land next to the church and built a multi-million dollar church next to it. Does that have anything to do with what I told the, the pastor? I have no idea. Speaking of which, I think a lot of the advice and commands my family gave to me were due to some jealousy going on, right? They believe they are spiritual, but they have no gifts to prove it, right? Now, the psychic mediums on TV said they tell the spirits to only tell them good things. I have never done that. I've never spoken to the spirits. I've never spoken to the dead. I've never acknowledged them. So I'm not going to hear them. So I get all things from the dead. Good and bad. Mostly bad. 
because I think here's something I think is logical. If you agree or leave a comment down below, I think most of the dead that are lingering are here for a purpose. Something went wrong. I think those at peace are at peace and they're not hanging around Chicama, right? I think it's, I'm a full psychic though, not just a medium and not just a psychic medium. The people on TV pretend that a psychic medium is someone that sees the future through talking to the dead. I think a full psychic is more like a fully five sense human being who can see, hear, taste, smell, all that sort of stuff. But I'm in the psychic world with that ability. I can smell things, detect things, hear things, see things, see things from the past uh, in, in areas. Uh, I get auras off of actual things, auras off of places, uh, and battle things in the psychic realm. I can astral project, uh, clairaudience, clairvoyance, telekinesis, read minds, force someone to read my mind, or send thoughts. All my best friends and I could have full conversations without talking. It would be nothing for us to sit there and bust out laughing like mad hyenas out of the blue. Now, when I met people who I thought would become my best friends, I would literally say, can't you read my mind? And they would go, that sounds crazy. And I said, just give it time. Just give it time. We'll be able to do it in, in, in a little while. Uh, but I do it almost naturally now. My neighbors are finally coming around to reading my mind. I can also touch someone and get their aura or feel their aura without touching them. I can't quite see auras. That might be because I didn't believe in it for the most of my life. What's funny is I felt for most of my life that black people's auras are too strong. I didn't like being around them. White people were much more comfortable <laughs> because I felt either a very limited aura or or none at all. I, I even once said that I felt that white people were dead. N not that I was trying to be insulting or anything. I'm talking about auras. Some black people's auras were so strong it made me sick being next to them. I cannot explain this. I have no idea nor any basis to understand the skill all my life though. I could tell a good person from a bad person. Even when the person acted like they were the goodliest person on the planet. Often friends and family would come back to me and say, you were right, Roger was terrible. And it's funny that I remember that name because that was one of the instances from like 30 years ago. But no one ever listened to me uh, more than after the fact, right? I've been thinking of going to haunted houses here in Las Vegas to see if I could see the dead and film it here for a YouTube show. If you would like to see this, everyone give a thumbs up. So even if you, you are religious, if you want to see the show, give, the, give the, uh, this video a thumbs up. Now, uh, a couple of addendums for those of you who said they want to meet me. I have quite a few people who legitimately, realistically, are afraid of me. They're afraid to be around me. They don't want to come over. They don't want to see me. Uh, text messaging is, I guess, okay with them. But uh, one thinks I have hypnotized him. I, I have a limited ability in that. Uh, I don't think it's what he thinks, and I don't think what his friend thinks, his group of friends think. They think that I have com I have complete control over him, as if like when he comes into my presence, uh, he turns into a robot, and I don't believe that's true. I haven't tried that. And the next person is a little bit even more intense. He thinks I'm a vampire. Why would he think that, Shikama? Well, Shikama sleeps in the day, is blind to sunlight, 
I act kind of strange and formal. Uh, I'm kind of like uh, the last of uh, interview with the uh, uh, the vampire where they find him and he's no longer this ritzy wealthy person he is now a used to be powerful guy and he has this quirky stuff and he's kind of wears formal clothing but they're old formal clothing and he is uh, getting into the habits of the new age uh, and now sometimes it's weird being around me because some days I can't walk Some days, I can't walk. Some days, I can't get up out of a chair. Some days, I can't walk upstairs. Some days, I'm bent over with my hand on my back. And other days, I literally can uh, climb up the side of a wall. That I could jump up, do somersaults, sprint, uh, lift three and four people in my arms. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't eat, but I don't lose weight. Uh, I don't drink soda, and I, but yet I'm of a certain physical, <laughs> of a certain physique. It's just, I have acronistic characteristics. Something that people look at and go, what, what did I just watch? What did I just see? So when he says he believes that I'm a vampire, uh, he's being completely honest. I've been called that for quite some time, quite a few years. So I said all of that to say, if you ever want to meet me, do not be surprised if you feel uncomfortable around me just by standing next to me not that I say anything uh, insulting or uh, anything strange but simply just being in my presence some people can't stand to be in my presence and it doesn't matter how big you are it doesn't matter how strong you are it doesn't matter how pretty you are it doesn't matter how handsome you are I had a friend the other day kiss my hand and my neighbors my neighbor and his girlfriend stopped and stared at me for a good five minutes in his truck sitting in the middle of the road as if completely shocked why the guy kissed my hand uh, and I don't mean like he was like mm, I like I mean like formal bow kiss my hand the whole nine yards like whatever now I don't I, yeah I just I don't know I've, I've had that done before. I've had people literally sort of like kind of worship me. It's strange. It's strange. It happens. I've had it happen to me all my life. Now, before, uh, I didn't question it. I was uh, the son of a diplomat, blah, blah, blah. I, I could see people doing that, bound to kissing my ring, kiss, kissing my hand, or what have you, right? I could see it. I, and I had some some stalkers overseas. I've had some very close calls overseas of people who have this fantasy about me that I don't know anything about. I am not hypnotizing people. I'm not doing anything to people. But I'm saying, if you ever come around me and you feel strange, you feel weird urges, please tell me about your urges first if you ever see me. Uh, anyway, I'm going to do an entire series on this. If you all give me about, what, 100 likes? Give me about 100 likes to start off with. Then we're going to up it to 10,000. If we can get this to 10,000, it's a done deal. Thank you all for watching the Shikama Live Show. And, and if you want to see the Shikama Psychic Ghost Hunting Live Show from Las Vegas, please uh, like the video. There's a distance between us It's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits 
Cause you can break me down, but I'll stay 